I want you to imagine a beautiful mansion, palatial, gorgeous lawns, butlers, maids, and two 15-year-olds live there. They're brothers. One day they're having a conversation, and one brother says, you know, look what our father does for us. Everything. He won't spare any expense. It's unbelievable how much we owe our father. His other brother says to him, hmm, I don't know about that. All this getting up early in the morning to go running, any special tutors we got to study with. I think the old man's into it for his own honor. What's the difference between the two brothers? And the first one is adopted. The first one grew up in the streets. The first one grew up without. And when the man took him into his house, that brother appreciates everything because he knows what it's like not to have. His other brother grew up in a lap of luxury, had a silver spoon in his mouth, and he doesn't appreciate, doesn't even recognize everything that's here because it's always been a part of his world. The Chovas of Ovas explains that's a mushal, a parable to us. We could have hands, we could have legs, we could have mobility, we could have sight, we could have hearing, we could have so many blessings, but if we don't train ourselves to appreciate it, we feel entitled to it, we don't recognize it, we feel we don't owe Hashem anything. And interestingly, explains the Chovas of Ovas, the center core of everything that we do should come from a sense of appreciation. We're supposed to serve Hashem at a sense of gratitude, at a sense of, Hashem, how could I begin to pay you back for one ten thousandth of all that you've done for me? And the first problem is that oftentimes we feel entitled. I don't owe Hashem anything because all that I have is things that He has to give me. And the first thing that a person has to work on is eliminating that sense of entitlement. But there's one more step. I want you to imagine a little different scene. Imagine a man who's 35 years of age and he goes blind, loses his sight. And he has to relearn everything. He has to relearn how to navigate, how to find things, how to identify objects. He has to recreate a life. And he does just that. He learns how to navigate in absolute blackness and he recreates for himself a new living, a new life, and he lives that way year after year. Finally, after 10 years of living in absolute blackness, he hears about an operation that's a bit dangerous, it's experimental, but in theory they can reconnect his optic nerve, he agrees to undergo the procedure, he has to regain his sight, he's brought into the hospital, put under anesthetic, after 10 hours of the operation he begins to regain consciousness, with the bandages on his eyes, with the nurses, the doctors at the foot of his bed, they peel off one bandage, they pull off a second, he opens his eyes and he sees colors, textures. He sees the faces of his loved ones that he hasn't seen in 10 years. He looks out the window and he sees a tree, he sees grass, he, he sees flowers. With tears in his eyes, he says, Doctor, doctor, what could I ever do to repay you for this gift, this gift of sight? The Chobos of Ovos explains that that emotion, that feeling of elation and joy, we are supposed to experience on a daily basis. We have a string of brachas. We say them in the morning, an entire string of blessings. Pokeach Ivrim, Hashem, you give sight to the blinded. Zokiv Kifufim, you write the crooked. I have mobility, I have my sense of touch, I have my sense of hearing. I have so much, but I only have it if I train myself to appreciate it. If I go about this thing called life busy as a beaver, but never train myself to appreciate that which I have, I might as well not have it, and there's nothing for me to thank Hashem for. But after I've eliminated that sense of entitlement, after I recognize the fact that everything that Hashem created was for mankind's benefit, and Hashem didn't have to give me anything, and then I train myself to appreciate it, then I can have that sense of overwhelming appreciation, and overwhelming gratitude. And if you'd like to do that, there's one simple exercise to work on. Imagine what it would be like if you didn't have that gift. Go to a nursing home. Watch an 85-year-old man walk with a walker. Every step painful. Every single time he has to go from where he is to where he wants to be, it's an ordeal. Put yourself into that place. Close your eyes and in your mind's eye, put yourself there. Imagine what it would be like if you had to walk that way. Look at a man with a stroke. Watch him as he takes a spoon. And the entire ordeal of trying to bring that spoon and actually bring it into his mouth. And if you imagine that that's you. 
And if you say to yourself, it's not because of anything I've done, and not because I'm clever, and not because I'm worthy, but the reason why I'm not in that state is only because Hashem has gifted me, then you open your eyes in the morning and you feel a sense of wealth. Look at what Hashem has given me, hands and legs, mobility, my sense of hearing, my sense of sight. Wow, Hashem, look what I enjoy. Thank you, Hashem. You live a life with a sense of gratitude, a sense of appreciation. You live a life that's exalted. <laughs>